Well, good afternoon. We're continuing on with Teaching Volume 2, Chapter 13. And today, we're going to be looking at Matthew Chapter 33, 633. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When we come to church on Sunday, we naturally look around the room to see who is there. And we go and speak to those people we know and love and with whom we have built up a close relationship. We do this because we recognize them physically and also by their voices, we know from experience that we can trust them. There are other people we see at church who we recognize, but we don't know on them on a personal relationship basis. So we acknowledge them, we nod our heads to them, we speak a greeting to them, but that as far as the relationship goes. In 2013, when I preached this message, God wants us to go past the outer courts and into his holy place, to a place of close intimacy with him. We don't just want to give Jesus a nod as we see him. The scripture in Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom. In the previous verses, Jesus has been talking about other things. But here in verse 33, Jesus sets the priority. But first seek the kingdom. All others other things are there, but God says, Jesus says, Number one priority, set first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. However, we cannot seek first the kingdom unless we know who the king is, what his characteristics are, and where the king is. Jesus wants us to recognize him just like we do with our other friends, by his physical and spiritual appearances, by his character, and by his voice. He wants to, us to get to know him in such a way that we can talk to him about anything, knowing that he will always listen, that he will always give us perfect advice, and that he will never gossip to, about us to anybody else or betray our confidentiality. Jesus wants you to learn to trust him so that you know you can tell him anything, knowing he will not confide it to anyone else. Jesus wants you to realize that Jesus Christ is your Perfect friend. Once you know who the king is, then Jesus can introduce you to his kingdom. It is his desire to see his kingdom come, right here on the earth now, dwelling within each heart here on earth. Because that's where it says we're supposed to, Christ is supposed to dwell. Jesus wants us to recognize that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit the living stones of his holy temple here on earth. Once his kingdom is established here in each heart, then this church becomes his kingdom here in Toowoomba. This applies to any city. When each and every congregation member has Jesus in their heart, they become the living stones of his church in the city in which you are living. It becomes a mighty fortress, a mighty fortress for our God. Then Jesus says that the second priority is to seek his righteousness. Righteousness means to have a right standing with God. Jesus wants us to learn from his word what Jesus considers to be right and what Jesus considers to be wrong. We cannot do this by just attending church on a Sunday, waiting for the pastor to give us a 40-minute scripture meal, which must last us for a week. I want to tell you, if you only have one meal, physical meal in a week, by the end of the week, you will be starving. Each of us must become a disciple, not a believer. We have to become a disciple, a disciplined one, who undertakes private Bible study every day. Jeremiah 31 chapter 31, verses 31 to 33, prophesied that the new covenant would not be a covenant with the circumcision of the flesh, but would be a circumcision of the heart. 
that the Holy Spirit would become our teacher. Once we understand what God says is right and what God says is wrong, then we have to take a stand for issues in this natural world. We have to consciously make a decision to stand on God's side of all issues. We can't just believe it and then not do it. Will this be a popular at all times? No. Will this will we be persecuted for taking this stand? Yes, possibly. Jesus already told us in his word that if we follow him, expect to be offended. Jesus told that as they persecuted him, the evil ones, the unrighteous ones, so they will persecute all who stand up for his name and for his precepts. Last year we actually saw this happen in our church. Pastor David proclaimed from his pulpit that the gay rights movement was evil and what they were trying to do by changing the marriage laws of the state and the nation were wrong. Unrighteous people rose up and threatened to kick us out of the building where the church was being held. Others wrote defamatory articles about the church in the press. But praise the Lord, God's word is true. He said that if we seek his face and seek his kingdom and, and stand up for righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. We got favour with the Bishop of Brisbane and were not kicked out of the building. We sent petitions to the state and federal governments and the bills were defeated. I proclaim that later even the Toowoomba local newspaper will come out in favour of this church as they start to see what God is doing and going to do through this church because we stand up for righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. What things? The things that Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter 5 and the first 32 verses of Matthew chapter 6. These are the promises that we can claim if we obey the first part of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. If we seek first the kingdom and then his righteousness, God says all these promises belong to you. This is how the Holy Spirit talks to me through his word and through my deep conversation with him each day as I take my three kilometre walk around Newtown Park. Sometimes this conversation is so intense that when I finish my walk, I realise that I've walked not three kilometres but six kilometres. This is good for the body and also good for the soul. Why not try it? Walking is a good place to talk to God. 